Well, he sold more than 140 million records worldwide, performed for the Queen four times. He has stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and classed Elvis Presley as a friend. We are honoured to be joined by the legendary UK pop singer, Engelbert Humperdinck. Yay! Yay! Really lovely to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, what have you been up to before you've come in to see us today? Where have you been? Well, I've, I've, I've been around. I've, uh, you know, I've been working. If I look a little bit jet lagged, it's because I am. You know, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I arrive early and uh, uh, I come from LA. I came from LA and. But I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm yeah. ready to go. Fire. We'll give you a few cups of coffee. You'll be absolutely great. Yeah. It is so good to have you here. I mean, I know you love New Zealand, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to go and see your concert. But we were talking just before, and um, you would just come from Manila and other places like that. How was that? Absolutely magnificent. Uh, I played uh, Manila, Bangkok, and Singapore. Uh, and when I was in, in Bangkok, when I was leaving the hotel, it was like... An unbelievable thing. This, this, all the staff came out of the hotel and lined up on either side, and they were. Uh, I came out of my hotel and they were throwing rose petals as I walked down the. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I oh, felt. Wow. I, I, I didn't know where to put myself. I felt like royalty, you know, and it was just amazing, amazing. I, I said, somebody take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope you got that. No. That must have been incredible. Did you ever think? right back in the day when you were just a little boy that you would grow up to be walking through a hotel in Bangkok with people <laughs> throwing rose petals at you. No, I never thought, I never thought Because you were quite shy, weren't you, as a child? Pardon me? You were shy as a child. I was a little shy, a shy boy at one time. You know, when I was, when I was very, very young, and I, I mean, to this day, I, I'm pretty shy, although you, you may not think so right now. No. <laughs> but, uh, to this day, I'm shy. Before I walk on stage, I'm really nervous because I'm stamping my feet and, and my hands are cold and, and, and I, I'm wondering, wondering if my voice is going to work right. So I hold the micro, microphone slide and I hold the microphone way back here and I, I'm singing really loud with the overture, you know, when the overture is ah, trying to keep my voice warm. And then, you know, I think, <coughs> well, I think it may be right now. And then I walk on stage and after about three or four or five minutes, my hands start to warm up and I get back to back to normal. I still, after all these years, you know, it's amazing. Which is funny. Why do you think that is? Do you think the crowd aren't going to like you? They obviously do. You don't, you don't know, do you? I mean, you don't know. I mean, sometimes you, 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 you just, something might go wrong or something like that. It's all in your head, you know. So. You know, Engelbert, you obviously worked very hard when you were young at music. And I know there was, you know, the name changes and a few experimentations with music. When did you feel for the first time that you were famous? Was there a moment? I don't think you really get to, to, to say I am secure, you know. Right. That although, you know, when I, when I first got released, me, you know, and, and it, it was just an amazing time in my life, I never thought I would have something that would be that powerful because it went to number one around the world, you know, and it stopped the Beatles from having their 13th number one, <laughs> you know. And, and the Guinness Book of World Records, I think. And the yes, Guinness yeah. Book of World Records. That and, must have been extraordinary. And, and it was just an amazing time in my life of selling thousands and thousands, like 80, 90, 100,000 a day, mm. you know, which doesn't happen in today's world. You know. So where were you, or where was the most unusual place that you've been standing when you've heard one of your songs <laughs> in the world? Because as you say, they're played everywhere oh yeah I, I i mean i've been to I, I was in south africa and i visited a village uh, and uh, i was walking through this village and and the, all the huts were on the other side and i could hear a little radio playing from from you know in, in one of the huts and it was my music you know in south africa it was just amazing amazing this is going back to 1968 69 when i first went to south africa because I was, you know, uh, in 68, I made my first world tour, you know, after, after having released me. Well, I tell you what, Engelbert, we've got so much to discuss. We need to talk about the 10 guitars, because that's like a New Zealand anthem. So I tell you what, we'll take a break and come back, okay. because while you are here, thank you for being here, by the way, we're going to talk to you more. So we'll take a short break, come back with Engelbert Humperdinck in the studio, in the cafe. This is one of the greatest moments of my life. So we'll be back very soon. <laughs> Wow, 
welcome back to the cafe. We are very lucky to have the legendary Engelbert Humperdinck with us this morning. As I said, Engelbert, it is great to have you here in New Zealand. I know you're in the middle of your tour. Uh, we'll give people all the dates very soon. What we were just listening to was 10 guitars. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for that song. We love it here. We love it. So you know that is our unofficial anthem in New Zealand, don't you? So there's a lot of pressure on you with the song. I'm very, very thrilled about that. You also have it in your post office, by the way, 10 guitar stamp. Y yes, we yeah, get to so lick your head. <laughs> I'm quite honoured about that. You know. yeah. yeah, I get. Uh... <laughs> now, look, you have worked with some incredible people over the years, and I know that you were friends with Elvis as well. Those days back in the 60s, you know, it was a huge scene. A lot of them haven't made it to where you are. What do you think has been the difference between them and you? I know some of them have passed on, which has been very sad, but, you know, your music's been enduring. Why do you think that is? I think it's uh, the kind of the kind of music that was around it there was uh, uh, at that particular time. You know, it, it had lasting power because it they, they're standards. Right. You know, mm -hmm. Songs like that, that last forever. Nowadays, the, the songs are written for weeks, not for years. You know, uh, they're good songs, but it's momentary. You know, it's, it comes and it goes. But m my kind of music in those days, they they were, they mm. stood they stayed had staying power. Does. As a matter of fact, uh, the songs I sing now are as fresh when I do them on stage as, as I, when I recorded them. Now, we just <coughs> mentioned that you're friends with Elvis, mm -hmm. um, and rumour has it that he copied the sideburns from well, you. Is there any truth to that? He, <coughs> I want to tell you that uh, he never had it on in when I, uh, when I like in the early 70s, he put it on about 70, 72, 73. I was on in 65. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when, I, when, I, when I had my hit in 67, they were already uh, already there. And, and you know, famous people like uh, like uh, um, uh, Bob Hope, you know, who who I did his show many times, and he was saying, "Engelbert looks as though he's on the phone all the time." <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they it. made fun about my side, but but I I took I I, I made these popular. You did. Yeah. You're, you're the owner of them. You started that trend well before Elvis Presley. Um, you know, th that era as well. You must have had some great memories, some great people that you got to hang with. Can you tell us some good stories? Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I worked, I've worked with some of the greats. Uh, Dean Martin. I loved Dean. Dean was a great... Well, as a matter of fact, he was the one that introduced me into, into Las Vegas. He, the hotel that, he, uh, that I played there was owned by Dean. Right. Yeah. Was he fun? He, he was, looked like fun. He was fun. He, as a matter of fact, he put, he was the only one. He put his name on the model. Dean Martin presents Engelbert Humperdinck. You know, nice. And it was great. And he, he 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 said he gave me some advice. You know, it's wonderful advice. And he said, Dinky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know a, a Dean never called me Ange or Engelbert or anything. He always called me Humpy Dumpy Lumpy Dumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Humpy Dumpy Lumpy Dumpy. <laughs> Love he, it. He's yeah. a wonderful man. Wonderful guy. I met some wonder, some great people in the early days, you know. And and you know, like nowadays we all take photos of the famous people we meet. Do you, have you missed out on taking photos with some you of know, the greats? In the early days, we didn't have the phones that mm. had the cameras on it, and you didn't carry phones, uh, uh, cameras around with you in those days. Yes, I got to meet some absolutely amazing people in my time, and I and I so regret mm. not having pictures taken with them all. I did have pictures with Elvis, of course, right. but. but mm. uh, there's some amazing people I didn't have pictures with. I mm. bet. Yeah. With your songs, and you're performing them on stage, as we said, you've been performing them, some of them, for close on 50 years. Yeah. Do you have a favourite? Well, I, I have to say that uh, uh, Release Me is my favourite. Yeah. Followed closely by Ten Guitars. Ten gu <laughs> you are in New Zealand, remember? I will definitely be doing Ten Guitars. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Just checking. Just clearing that up. You know what? I, I happened to sit down and, and, and write part of the lyrics of that song when, when it was being written by Gordon Mills, you know? Uh, I was present at the time, and I, I was... Uh, while he sat there... Da, 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 da. And, I mean, uh, I helped write, write the song with him. But I didn't get credit for it, by the way. Because I was nobody at the time. Well, I'll tell you what, you have come such a long way. The country's very excited that you're back. And we're going to give all the details of the tour very soon. Uh, in fact, they are on screen now. So if you want to head along, make sure you go and see this great man. Are you going to get out in New Zealand and play some golf? Because I know you love golf. Have you got any downtime? 
Uh, I don't think I'm going to have time to play golf. Right. Ah. Okay. You know, because it's travel, 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 yeah. travel. Don't do the job. No, I won't. But I do love playing golf, and you know. But uh, as far as uh, I don't think I'll be able to play while I'm here. Well, that's okay. That just means that you're going to have to come back <laughs> yes. and do a proper golfing holiday next time. I think time. so. I it, think so. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the cafe my with pleasure, us. My pleasure, my dear. Thank you so much. Engelbert Humperdinck's New Zealand shows continue over the next few days in New Plymouth and also Auckland. Check out his website for tour dates. Okay, now over to Holly. Yeah, yeah, I love you, Mum, but I can't ask him that. I can't. Yeah, I'll get you a signature. All right. I'll get you a signature. Yeah, excellent. I've got to be on the telly.